Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the mysterious dark matter once again. Although actually not the dark matter, but the opposite of that. One of the theories that tries to remove dark matter from existence completely and instead focus on trying to understand the universe without needing any dark matter in it whatsoever. So let's talk about this new uh, paper that just came out and welcome to Wadamai. So first of all, this is the paper, you can find this in the description below. And the main idea in this paper is that for the first time ever, the scientists studying so-called MOND or the modified Newtonian dynamics have been able to partially recreate part of the universe using the parameters from the MOND theory and it surprisingly looked somewhat similar to what we really have in uh, what we see in our universe. Now let me explain this in a little bit more detail, but before I explain this to you, I wanted to focus on why we still believe dark matter might exist. So originally, some of the first scientific papers about dark matter were actually made by this wonderful uh, lady, this is Vera Rubin, who was the first to notice something unusual about the so-called galactic curves. In other words, she noticed that when we look at different galaxies, even though technically if we use Newtonian physics, we expect some of the farther stars here to move slower. Basically, the farther away they are from the center, the slower they should move, just like planets. In reality, we saw something like this. The velocity was much, much higher than we expected. 10 times higher, as a matter of fact. And this was the first official confirmation of the possible existence of the so-called dark matter. But over a few decades now, we've collected a lot of other evidence as well. Like, for example, there are these unusual gravitational lensing effects coming from what seems to be empty space. And some of these gravitational lenses are extremely powerful and this would be very difficult to explain with just the visible matter. We've also noticed that there are quite a lot of these so-called dark matter galaxies, or essentially galaxies that have some stars, a few visible stars, but for the most part they actually behave like a typical galaxy. The stars here move pretty fast, suggesting that something is holding them together. We've also seen various interactions in galactic clusters, and I think the most famous one, and the one that's usually used to prove dark matter, is the so-called bullet cluster where several galaxies collided and we've observed the interaction between regular matter and what appears to be this unusual invisible matter as well. And all of these effects to us, uh, to modern scientists, suggest that dark matter might be a real thing. There are actually a few more examples as well, I'm not going to mention all of them in this video and I've also mentioned some of them in previous videos, but the idea is there. But the problem is, for the past, uh, I guess, a few decades now, all of our attempts of finding dark matter using relatively expensive experiments have not really been successful. There were some partial successes, but nothing where you can totally say that we've just discovered it. Which is why many alternative theories have been proposed over the years, and the one that's probably most accepted today, the one that's sort of alternative and not too crazy, is what's known as MOND. Modified Newtonian Dynamics, originally proposed by this person right here, Mordechai Milgram, who essentially um, suggested that we could actually um, explain these observations if we redefine the way gravity works at faraway distances. In other words, he suggested that even though for a typical galaxy close to the center, you'll still observe Newtonian effects, as you move away from the center, the farther away you get, the more unusual the effects get. And the way that this theory works in a nutshell is, well, it explains the Newtonian physics or Newtonian attraction between two bodies by involving distance as well, but in a very different way. In other words, up to a certain distance, the attraction between various bodies is relatively similar, but as you move away from the center of the galaxy and the acceleration becomes lower, such as here in the outskirts of a typical galaxy, the attraction between bodies becomes considerably stronger, explaining why galaxies don't fall apart even when stars move this fast. In other words, it reinterprets the gravitation formula for faraway distances. And this is something that um, does explain a lot of things in the universe, including, of course, the previously mentioned galactic curves. But the biggest thing that it could not explain is the creation of the universe itself before. Basically, all of our modern computer simulations using supercomputers are always able to simulate relatively accurate galactic representations, this is basically what's known as universe in a box, using the theory that accepts dark matter, also known as lambda CDM model. This is the model where we think dark matter exists. 
And basically, this is the most accepted theory right now. So, for example, in this project here, this is known as the Illustris project, the actual galaxies generated are extremely accurate, but this does use dark matter. We've never before been able to do this with other theories. But this paper, for the first time ever, was able to generate this universe in a box, but using no dark matter. And according to the scientists, it's more or less correct. It, it's more or less something that we can compare to the real thing. Which is great news for the scientists that don't believe in dark matter and think that the MON model explains it a lot better. Now, it obviously still doesn't explain some of the other things we're seeing, like for example, the previously mentioned bullet cluster that you see here is still kind of difficult to explain or actually impossible to explain using the MOND model. And also some of the other effects like the uh, gravitational lensing effects are also not particularly um, MOND friendly. But nevertheless, this new simulation definitely is a great step for possibly explaining the universe without the need for dark matter. Now, the takeaway message here is not that dark matter does not exist. It's just sort of a new explanation to how we can see the universe differently. And despite the success of this new simulation, we still need to work out a lot of other problems that the model has. But according to the scientists behind this paper, some of the things simulated in their model was even better than in the traditional dark matter model. Like for example, they were able to generate clusters that were a little bit more realistic, while at the same time their model was also able to generate quite a lot of various galactic disks, like the one you see here, and the one that's very similar to the Milky Way in a sense. And this is something that's not usually that easy for other models. While at the same time, the scientists also mentioned that uh, for the most part, when the simulations use dark matter in them, these results are normally very sensitive to the location and the number of different supernova. So in some situations, not a very realistic galaxy is created if the supernova numbers are incorrect. And um, in the MON model, it didn't really matter as much. But nevertheless, there are still some major problems with this as well. One of the biggest problems here is that according to the MON model, the speed of light and the speed of gravity is not exactly the same. But since 2017, when we started measuring gravitational waves, we discovered that both speed of light and speed of gravity are actually the same. So in that sense, MON model is not really correct. At the same time, certain motions of global clusters are not easily explained by MON model either. As a matter of fact, they're usually predicted incorrectly, whereas globular clusters we see in reality do seem to follow a more um, lambda CDM-like motion. In other words, the dark matter motion. So in that sense, there are still a lot of questions to be answered for both of the theories. Or technically, it's not even a theory yet, it's just a hypothesis. And neither of these theories can be disregarded or disproved very easily. They both have quite a lot of interesting ideas that are quite supported by various scientists. As a matter of fact, Vera Rubin herself, who passed away only a few years ago, started speculating near the end of her life that maybe we need to redefine how we see Newtonian gravity. So in a sense, she believed in a kind of a mon-like model and slowly moved away from believing in dark matter as an actual particle. Most of this came from the fact that over the decades, they kept predicting that we're going to find dark matter at some point, but nothing was coming out of it. So something else was happening with the universe that we just didn't understand just yet. But in all honesty, what I personally think is that neither one of these models is perfect just yet and neither one of these explains things the way they really are. There's probably something else happening here, we're still not really sure what, but discovering these things is going to be one of the biggest groundbreaking discoveries of the 21st century, hopefully. I mean, hopefully we discover what's happening here because, I mean, it's been driving a lot of scientists pretty crazy. And because even today we have so many experiments already running and so many more that are planned for the future, I'm sure in the next uh, 30 to 40 years we'll finally be able to solve this mystery. At this moment, um, I'm personally not even sure what it is anymore, but because none of the theories provides an absolutely perfect answer, this is why it's a little bit difficult to say with certainty. Which is of course where we go back to the original idea of scientific process. We have to get enough evidence to support our idea before it becomes a fact. Right now, none of this is factual. But hopefully in our lifetime, we'll be able to explain what's going on. Otherwise, a lot of people are just going to be um, very dissatisfied. Anyway, on that note, once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, but for now you can check out the paper that I mentioned in the description below, and some of the pictures from the simulation are available in it as well. 
And before we finish, well, it's very unfortunate that Vera Rubin passed away without ever winning a Nobel Prize, and many people believe that she definitely deserved it, but uh, a few months ago, to commemorate her name, uh, this beautiful observatory was renamed into Vera C. Rubin Observatory. This is actually an amazing device that's going to help us understand the universe in a lot more detail. And in the next few years, we'll be hearing a lot more about this particular uh, observatory because it's going to be making a lot of new discoveries. But on that note, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and space out. And as always, bye bye.